Okay. What, um, so now you graduate from college and you're starting your career. Um, did you know at that point, like I'm heading to be a judge one day or are you thinking I'm happy just to be an attorney or how did all that play out? Um, first of all, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I sort of had a feeling, I'll put it, I, by the way, I was a Boy Scout. And I think scouting is one of the good things that helped me uh, always be prepared, treat others the way you'd like to be treated, things of that nature. So uh, I felt good about that, and that had a lot to do with my thinking. But I still didn't know really what I wanted to do. I had a feeling that I wanted to make a difference. I had a feeling that I wanted to be able to do something that would help people. And, uh, and surprisingly, it, it started out with the military. <laughs> uh, after having the two years required at A&T at that particular time, uh, I, uh, I, I met uh, a couple of people who were military folks who were very sympathetic, who, were, uh, uh, who tried to make a difference in life, and uh, uh, and I was impressed. I was impressed by that, and uh, so I I stayed in the military after I, when I say I stayed in uh, 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 on active duty a couple of years, mm -hmm. but uh, I remained in the reserves for I guess 20 years or something, maybe well, a little more than that I guess. Now, where did you start your career as an attorney? Oh, Green Greensboro. In Greensboro, yeah. you started here. Right. Right. By this time, uh, I was married to E. Shirley Taylor, who changed her name to Fry. Thank, <laughs> thank goodness. We, that was uh, one of the things I, I thought we should do, and I, I hope she thought the same way. <laughs> we ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> but she, she still kept a little part of it. She, now, right. she, she, once you, so you got married, and then in your career, how long were you an attorney before you started going to being a judge and then even the Supreme Court? Oh, uh, let's see. I was an attorney for several years. I can't even tell you at this point uh, how many. But uh, I, uh, I was practicing law and uh, doing a good job, enjoying what I was doing. And uh, I'll see if I can make it real short. Uh, the governor called me early one morning. No, he called me that night and said that uh, he wanted to appoint me to the Supreme Court of North Carolina. And uh, it caught me really by surprise. He said, now, so you think about it and call me before breakfast in the morning because I don't want the, there was a newspaper article in, in the Raleigh newspaper, News and Observer, right? right. Mm -hmm. And they tended to get news before it, <laughs> anybody else. He says, they call me in the morning because I want to announce it before it gets in under the dome. That's what the Raleigh News and the Observer uh, column was all about. And so I talked with my wife, talked with my two sons and everything, and they said, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. That was the essence, of course. You know, where one, of them, one of them wanted to know how much it paid. <laughs> <laughs> one of your sons did. Yeah. I said, now before you make that's this move, young, Dad. That's my younger son. He <laughs> wants to know, he want to know what kind of pay. He said, is that all they pay? <laughs> smart, smart kid. Um, which governor was that, by Hunt, the way? That was Governor Jim Hunt. Jim Hunt. Yes. yes. Um, so you were, I mean, obviously honored and taken aback a little bit. But, uh, but this was, now were you, at that point, were you just on the Supreme Court or, or were you the Chief Justice? At oh, that? oh, oh, no. Oh. I was, uh, let's see now, let me, I gotta get this, gotta get this thing. That's all right. Um, hmm. Uh huh. Well, I'm sure you started I, as a. Just yeah, on well, the I started, Court. of course, as a regularly enlisted person. You know, not, no, I didn't, not as an enlisted person. I started out uh, uh, as, a, uh, as an officer because I went to officer training school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was, yeah. I'm, I'm getting vague here. That's all right. Moment. Yeah. Um, uh, when you were, how, once you were appointed, you were the first African American Chief Justice, yes, right, of the right. North Carolina Supreme Court. Um, talk a little bit about how that made you feel, and because that's, that's a big thing. 
Well, uh, I was sort of accustomed to being first African-American in North Carolina to do this, that, or the other. <laughs> so they, uh, uh, I'd had some things, you know, other, other opportunities. And um, there was this feeling about, uh, from some people that uh, I had to be perfect. <laughs> and I had to explain to them, you know, I'm human like everybody else, you know but I'm not going to go out and rob anybody or, right. anything, or steal from anybody or anything like that. But uh, I can't be a, a, a real role model in the sense of, you know, just being perfect uh, with it. And so I had that conversation with a few of my friends. Uh, and uh, I, I think I did well, but I'm sure I made mistakes like every other human being. The pressure must have been pretty big. You said that there were several things that you did to be the first African American to do this and this. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of pressure, especially at that time period. Mm -hmm. How did you handle that pressure? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, uh, I, uh, I believe in treating people the way that I would like to be treated. And so I think that had something to do with it. Uh, I, uh, I I was not too quick to judge people as being right or wrong. I, I you know, I, I would think, well, you know, if I were in that position, you know, what, what would I do? How would I react? You know, and I'm, I'm I wasn't perfect. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and and uh, and I think I made friends fairly easy, uh, but. Uh, and I give some background, some credit to my background. Uh, I started out in church and Sunday school early. And uh, um, I believed in the Bible, let's put it that way. And uh, so well, and being that, fair. that had some, uh, all of that is a part of my, uh, my thinking. Now I wasn't perfect, I mean, you understand. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't get that idea. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but at any rate, I, I, what's the, there's a song that said, I, I never reached perfection, but I've tried. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we have to do. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like empathy for other people and fairness were big to you. Yes, absolutely. Your whole life, is that a fair statement? I, I hope so. And uh, so mm -hmm. things went well with me. Uh, I, uh, I didn't have a lot of, pro I thought, I wondered at first, for example, when I first went to the legislature, and some people would say I was the first African American to serve in the legislature. That's not true. Uh, I was the, the first uh, to be appointed in the 20th century and serve after that. In other words, uh, there were blacks in the legislature in the 1890s, quite a few. Uh, and uh, so I, I, my wife told me that, 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 that you got to just stop, you know, because every time they would, the, actually the, the news media, believe it or not, I'd go ahead and say that. <laughs> they put in there the first African American to serve on the Supreme Court of North Carolina. And I would call them and tell them, no, that's not right. And then I would name, you know, blacks who were there you know, in the 1890s and so forth. And when they got ready to order, them, they get, got ready to uh, publish the next article, They'd pick it up, you know, from the old newspapers and put that back, right back in back there. Back in there. You got that title whether you want, liked yeah, it or not. It well. um, the, you were telling me a story before we started, and I wanted mm -hmm. you to tell that story when you said some people, you, we were talking about where you were, when you would travel and where you would eat. Do you remember you were telling oh, yes. me that? Can you tell that story? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the, when I was appointed, mm -hmm. when the announcement was made in the newspaper, that I was being appointed to the Supreme Court of North Carolina. Uh, the article said something like, uh, the big question that people are asking is, where is he going to eat when he travels around in the district? And of course the district included Salisbury and um, Asheville, Durham, and other places. And uh, hmm. the, uh, the, the retired dean from A and T, uh, answered the question that, "Don't worry about him; he'll be all right." <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think you made it okay, Henry. You oh did yeah, a good yeah, job. I did. But no, nah, there was some discrimination now. Don't, oh, I'm don't sure. You, don't well, you think there wasn't? But, and but I tried to, I, I, I tried to avoid that. You know, uh, uh, in my situation, uh, sometimes when you're first with something, you you're a little conscious about what thing, how things look to you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I was a little careful about that, and and uh, and uh, I was criticized by a few people who who said, you know, he ought to be out there doing this and doing that and so forth. Well, uh, that's life. Yeah. You know, you're gonna get criticism. That's right. Whatever you do, so I try to do what I think is best, and uh, you know, I like to be liked, but uh, I'm not always liked. Because some people don't like what I say, and some people don't like what I do. But I have to give uh, myself. I have to satisfy myself. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of people say there's two people we answer to, and that's ourselves and the man upstairs. And as long as you feel like you're doing the right thing, yes, that's the, or at least that's how I think a lot of people, to be a leader is difficult. You will make decisions that some people don't like, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. And it's also life. Isn't it funny how a big career like the one that you had, uh, you can take so many things out of your life that benefit you in your career, but you can also take things out of how you handle yourself in your career that help you on your personal level too, I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but I, since we were talking about the, the legislature, uh, uh, when, when I first tried to register to vote, I couldn't pass the literacy test which was intentional. When I say intentional, not on my part, right. intentional on the, the uh, at, at that point, the, the registrar, but really on the whole system uh, of, of, of segregation and mm -hmm. all of that, that type of thing. And uh, so my first bill was a bill to uh, abolish the literacy test as a requirement for voting in North Carolina. And the news article uh, said that uh, uh, it was the bill least likely to pass, but we got it through. Uh, wow! Now it uh, by that time it was already beginning to change, and we had the Vi Voting Rights Act also that year, which, uh, as I recall, was was uh, passed before. Uh, I think before I, uh, before I, my literacy bill was passed, I've forgotten now. But now that but te it, that test, uh, it's it almost sounds like it was it was a racially motivated. Am I is that a fair statement to say it was really racially motivated to stop uh, African Americans from being able to vote? Yeah. Right. Yes. Did they give it to white people? Huh? Did they give the literacy test to white people? Not unless it's the one they didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Not what the registrar I'm talking about. No, I know. You know I the know. registrar had a lot of uh, <laughs> had a lot of lot of power. That's it. I, and, uh, it just when you hear this, mm -hmm. these statements now, and it doesn't matter how many times you hear it, and whether you're white or black or any any race, it's hard to believe that the system supported things like that. And I'm so glad that you did the work that you did to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we've made a lot of progress. And uh, I could go on and on and on about that. And uh, I, uh, I, I thought we had, I, I said, I've forgotten now all the things I said at the time that Obama was elected president of the United States. Uh, I was the happiest man on earth uh, because I knew that now that the, somebody has to break the barrier or has to be elected to it or appointed to it or whatever. And uh, I just knew that things were gonna, gonna, gonna be better. Do you, uh, how, wh where are we with race relations, do you think? Because you've seen an awful lot, Henry. I've seen an awful lot and uh, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of things that have gone back to some extent. I don't think they've gone back as far as, as they were back then. But uh, I guess it's, it's people, you know. There are people who, 
like to make progress as long as, as, long as for them. <laughs> and there, there are others who like to see almost anybody, you know, do well. And I'm glad to know that there are a lot of people who fit in that category. And so we, we sometimes we make uh, two steps forward and three backwards. Sometimes we make two steps forward and one backwards. And I like that second one where we make two <laughs> forward and one backwards. Uh, and uh, being human beings, it's, it's uh, while you would like to make progress without anything backwards, uh, it's very difficult to do. Um, the political system now and the way politics are as different as they've ever been before, I think uh, it's super polarized with Democratic and the Republican Party. Uh, when you watch all this stuff play out, what do you think has changed? Is it good or bad that our politics are the way they are now and then when you were in office or in your job? I guess, well, I guess your opinion yeah. of the political system, the way it's going now. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough, that's I know. That's a tough, that's a tough Because I question. feel like that it's, they don't, coming across party lines and helping each other out is mm -hmm. not happening as much as it used to, in my personal opinion. Okay, well, I'm glad that you, you saw that. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you'd have to give your age and your, <laughs> and, uh, your, your period to, to, to do that. Uh, I think uh, sometimes we make one step forward and two backwards, and then every now and then we make one step forward and it stays, and it, and it spreads, spreads. And so what I try to tell people who will listen is you can make a difference and you can make a difference if you respect people and try to make things better and so the challenge it seems to me for us is to always try to leave things better than we found them whether it's an organization that you're working with whether it's an office that you hold uh, whether it's President of the United States, and uh, I don't want to get into yeah. uh, get into discussion of the president. president. Yep. Let's leave that out. Yeah, we'll okay. just we'll just won't, won't mess yeah. with that one. Yeah. Um, one more, just a fun question for yes. you, and then we'll let mm -hmm. you go. If you hadn't done what you did, if that wasn't your line of work, what's the one thing that you would have loved to have been able to do? Um, maybe like a hobby or I asked this one time of a senator in Florida when I worked there and he said I always wish I could play the saxophone ah. and I thought that was so funny um, uh, is there anything you well, thought that you wish you could do well let me let me let me let me deal with the saxophone uh, that was the, the the musical instrument that I wanted to play the sax the saxophone and instead they gave me uh, what's what's the one that I got, uh, not a trumpet, but uh, God, a French horn. No, or? no, no. Uh, it's can't even think of what it is. It's a clarinet. Is clarinet. It, yeah, the black. Clarinet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't like that. <laughs> so I, I ended up uh, not, uh, not really staying in the, in the band. I had trouble with it because I, I guess, because that wasn't what I wanted, and I, I, that's one of my mistakes in life. <laughs> uh, I think if I had, uh, had really, you know, worked on it and and everything I might have done fairly well, maybe in that, in that area. You might have been a jazz musician. Henry. We, we well, might be having a different conversation. Well, right that's now. right. <laughs> uh, as Lil Abner would say, one never know, do one. <laughs> Thank you for taking time. All right. Really good, good, appreciate good, it. Yeah, Thank okay. you.